In this set of videos, we are trying to find strategies to solve quadratic equations. Solving quadratic equations really means to find zeros or x-intercepts or at times make both sides equal as it should be in the case of equation. Now, the question here is, determine strategy to solve following equations. We have three of them here. I'll do two and leave one for you. Now, the idea is, what kind of strategies we can adopt to solve quadratic equations? There are two basic strategies, I should say. One is factoring. So you can factor and solve. And second is use quadratic formula. So these are basically two strategies. Sometimes you can have graphic solutions. But there you may not get accuracy. So, so those could be the techniques adopted right now rearranging equations is the first part as you see in two of these examples well, we have 6x squared equals to 4x and here we have 2x squared minus 10x plus 5 equals to 2x plus 1 so in case you have a quadratic equation of this form the first step should be to bring all the terms to one side as shown here with this equation which is x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals to 0 so once you have all the terms on one side and zero on the other, then solving quadratic equation, as I said, is finding zeros or the x-intercepts, right? Now we can factor them or we can use the quadratic formula. Now let's start with the very first one. I've seen many students solving it by canceling x terms and then finding the solution. But if you do that, you actually cancel out one of the solutions. So that would be a huge mistake. Therefore, remember, not to cancel, but common factor is the strategy. Bring them to first one side and then do common factoring. I'll show you how. So we should write this as 6x squared minus 4x equals to 0. And then we can take a common factor. So 2 is common amongst numbers, so write 2, and x in variables. Then divide the first term by 2x. So 6 divided by 2 is 3 x squared divided by x is x minus do the same here minus divided by plus is minus therefore we have this minus here 4 divided by 2 is 2 x divided by x is 1 so we get just the number 2 here equals to 0 now when we say that these two now we've got two factors you may say 3 also 2 times x times 3x minus 2 equals to 0 now 2 cannot be 0 so that is not a solution right but x could be 0, so that becomes our first solution. So first solution is x equals to 0, which we get from here. And then this factor could also be 0. And this is 0 equated to 0. Take 2 on the other side, divide by 3. So you get x equals to 2 over 3. So that is our second solution. So we get two solutions for this particular quadratic equation. Remember, for a quadratic equation, you can get maximum two solutions and minimum zero many quadratic equations will not have solutions can you name some let me give you one on the side here for example if i write x squared plus one equals to zero then we land up with something which should be negative square of something should be negative one to make it zero and that is not possible right or in other words you can take it on the other side and say well x squared equals to minus one well that is impossible and if you do further square root you know square root of a negative number is not real so we don't really have a real solution so let me write here when we are solving quadratic equation we are actually saying real rules okay in the world of where the set of numbers belongs to complex we'll have a solution in this case also right a complex root but we are not getting there yet okay so what you understand here is a quadratic equation can have 0, 1, or 2 solutions. So there is a possibility of not having a solution also. So first strategy was bring the terms together, factor, and get the answer. Don't cancel. That is, you have to remember, right? The next one is, let's try to factor this. We are trying to find a product which is minus 3 and sum as plus 4. So we don't have any combination. Since we don't have any combination, the only option left is use quadratic formula. Now, quadratic formula is 
x equals to minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. Now in this, what is a, b and c? Now a is the coefficient of x square, b is the coefficient of x and c is the constant term which is minus 3 in this case and b is plus 4, a is 1. So we substitute all these values here to evaluate. So minus of b, that means minus of 4, that gives me minus 4 plus minus square root of b square which is 4 square. 4 square minus 4 times a is 1 and c is minus 3 square root divided by 2 times which is 1 is a. Now we can evaluate this and we get minus 4 plus minus square root of 16 and 4 times 3 is 12 minus times minus is plus. So we get plus 12 under the square root divided by 2 and that gives us minus 4 plus minus square root of 2 16 plus 12 is 28 so we get 28 within square root divided by 2 now these kinds of square roots should be simplified so we do have a video set of videos which will help you to solve radicals if you're not good at that now let's simplify this and try to write down our answer so we have here now let me take it on this side okay I need more room here so so what I will do is I'll shift it here okay so what I get here is equals to minus 4 plus and minus now 28 can be written as 7 times 4 so I'm taking you through a couple of steps which are not really required 7 times 4 right divided by 2 and now 7 is not a perfect square, but 4 is. So we could write this as minus 4 plus minus 2 square root of 7. Since square root of 4 is 2 divided by 2. Do you see that? So I'm taking you through these small steps so that you understand how to solve these kinds of radicals also. Now that will lead us to two answers, right? So one is minus 4 plus 2 square root 7 over 2. The other one is minus 4 minus 2 square root 7. Correct. So if I divide by 2 both the terms, I get here minus 2 plus square root 7 as one of the answers and minus 2 minus square root 7 as the other answer. So we get two solutions to this trinomial. Correct. Now this one I like you to do. So it has combination of first and the second. So first you have to bring all the terms together. Try to factor. If you can't, adopt quadratic formula and get your answer correct I hope that should not be very difficult for you it's a practice problem for you try to do it and then let's move on and solve some more quadratic equations thank you and all the best